So on simultaneous equations, um, the way you may have been taught first is this matching coefficients method. So we'll do this. But the first thing I want to say is that um, when doing simultaneous equations, especially starting out, it's a really good idea. I don't even think just starting out, even in leaving cert honours where you have three variables, you should always label your equations, say A and B, right? Or something different to the variables used. So for this, I've labeled this first equation A, the second one B. So we're looking for a value for X and a value for Y. The one value that works for both x's and both y's that solve the two of these equations. So this matching coefficients method, I'm going to do a simple example first where I'm going to match up the coefficients of one of the variables. So how do I do it? Well, first off, let's look here. So it's easier to look at the bottom equation and say, let's try and match this x up with this x up here. So on top we have 2x, from the bottom we just have a single x. That means that if we multiply this bottom equation by 2, and that means everything by 2. We will not put 2x in front, which is what we want, right? So for that, right, I'm going to write out my equations again. I'm going to take this like super slow. I'm going to say I have 2x plus 3y still on top. I have, I have not changed equation A. But what I have on the bottom is now 2 times B. Remember, we must multiply every term in here by 2. That gives us 2x minus 2y, 2 times 3, which is 6. Now, something that I do um, in junior cert level, I suppose, is I don't, if I want to cancel these, I want the signs to be different. Okay? So the signs are now the same. Some teachers teach it a different way to teach subtracting, but I like the addition method here. So if they're different, great. Just go ahead and cancel them, then add all the terms. But my signs are not different. So first off, are we need to change these signs, right? Change signs to cancel, right? And the way I'm going to write it in here, I'm going to put a little circle. I'm changing this sign. I'm changing this sign. And I have to change that sign. have to change every one. So this one went to a minus. This one went to a plus. This one went to a minus. Now I draw a line underneath, and I add. It might seem like subtract, but that's not what you're doing here. You're actually adding. So 2x minus 2x, right? Or like 2x plus a minus 2x. They've cancelled. That's the reason why we did this. Now, 3y, and now our new is a plus 2y. Well, 3y plus 2y gives us 5y. 16 and a minus 6, that will give us 10. Therefore, we're down to 5y is equal to 10, or 5 times 5y's gives us 10. So to get rid of this 5 with y, because we don't want 5y's, but we want a singular y, we want to get rid of this 5 with y. How do we do that? Well, let's devote, divide both sides by 5. If we do that, that gets rid of that 5 and leaves me with y is equal to 10 over 5. Right? What's 10 over 5? 2. Then you figured out now that y is equal to 2. So now you put this value back into an original equation. Back into A, R, B. So this now has to go, this value for y equal to 2 must go back into A or B. So look, we, we have a single kind of y and b, so let's put it into that. So in order to do this, let's write out equation b. All right. So equation b says x minus y is equal to 3. So we're going to say x minus. Now, instead of putting in y, we figured out y was 2. So it's always a good idea to put them in, in brackets, especially in case you ever deal with two negatives. So I always kind of put them in, in brackets. It's just good practice. So x minus 2 is equal to 3. So I'll, I'll get rid of the brackets now. So I'm redoing really the slow version here. I'll bring this 2 over. So now I get x equal to 3 and a plus 2. So therefore x is equal to 5. So I have my two answers done. x must be equal to 5. And we figured out here that y must be equal to 2. And that's it. Now I'll do one or two more examples, but that's the gist of how I would do it and a correct way to label it and a nice slow version that makes sense, I think. 
So for this one, <coughs> it's not a case of just multiplying the top or the bottom by something. It turns out you have to actually multiply both equations by something to solve this. Because if I multiply 2 by something, I won't be able to make a 3. And similarly, if I multiply 3 by something, I won't be able to make a 2. And the same with the y's, right? So even though I have been sticking with the x's, it's just as equally okay to multiply the y by something to match that up. But let's just take baby steps so far here and go on to the next one. And, and let's keep going. So if we look at this then, I'm going to multiply... What will I multiply this by? And what will I multiply this stuff by so that they match up? Well, it turns out the easiest way to think about this is if you look at the coefficient with x here, which is 2, and you look at the coefficient of x here, which is 3, well, if we multiply the top equation by this coefficient, and if we multiply the bottom equation by this coefficient, that will actually work all the time. So, when I do that, I essentially have my next line, and let's separate this out here, it's going to be 3 times a, and 2 times b. Alright, so remember we talked about labeling these equations. So what's 3 times a? That is 6x plus 9y equals to minus 6. And 2 times b? That is 6x plus 10y equals to minus 8. Now, we can see here that we've matched up these coefficients here. So our next step then was to change the signs. So this now changes to a minus, this changes to a minus, and this changes to a plus. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So now these are gone, and we have 9y minus 10y. That gives us a minus 1y. And we have minus 6 plus 8. That gives us a plus positive 2. So I'm left with minus y is equal to positive 2. I don't want minus y, I want regular plus y. So let's change the signs across in this equation here. And that will make this y a plus, but it will make this 2 a minus. So remember, it's okay to change the signs in an equation, something with an equals, once you change everything, right? So I could have changed this to minus 2x, minus 3y, then a plus 2. And that, it'd still be the same equation, as long as you're the same... Um, operation to each term. Not all operations work, that's something for another video, but for changing the signs, that always works. So remember, I got down to minus y is equal to 2. I didn't want minus y, I wanted a regular plus y, so I changed this to a plus y, but in doing so, changed this plus 2 to a minus 2. So now we're back to the same method. As the start, we're going to actually put this value for minus 2 back into an original equation. So let's maybe write out equation a there again. So so equation A is going to be 2x plus 3 times. Now, instead of y, we are now found out that y is minus 2. So in brackets, minus 2. And then that's going to be equal to minus 2. So it's important that we kind of use an original equation for this, right? So let's simplify this out and see can we solve for x. This is 2x. 3 times minus 2, that's minus 6 equals to just our minus 2 out there. So we're almost there. 2x equals to minus 2. When you bring this guy over, it becomes a plus 6. 2x is equal to minus 2 plus 6. That is a plus 4. And of course, we'll divide both sides by 2 to get rid of that 2 there. x is equal to 4 over 2, which is 2. So that's our answer. x is equal to 2 and y is equal to minus 2. So that's when your coefficients kind of are not easily matched up when you have to multiply both equations. But remember, we multiply the first equation by the coefficient that's bottom x, and multiply the second equation by the coefficient that's top x, and that will always work for you. Okay? So it's also important to realise that even though you have this method that will work every time, sometimes you can get confused when there's a step that doesn't seem to make sense. So just to cover something that if you've gone through the first two introductions, that something you might come up against in your examples. So let's look at this one here. So we have to match this equate these x's together. And it looks like, well, they have different signs. So actually, what happens here? Actually, you can actually have a step done for you there now if they have different signs. If anything, it makes it quicker and easier to do. So let's look at this. So we can either multiply this thing here by 2 to match up the y's. But are we can multiply the bottom one by 2 to match up the x's. Now I say match up, but their signs are different. But watch what I mean. I'm going to multiply the bottom function, or the bottom equation, sorry, by 2. 
right? And of course, as always, just for the benefit of demonstration, I will rewrite this stuff again. So I haven't touched A, but my A now is going to be still 4x plus 2 plus y, sorry, equals to 7. So still unchanged, but now on the bottom, I have 2 times B. So what's that give me? Well, 2 times minus 2x gives me a minus 4x. 2 times this gives me a minus 4y. And 2 times minus 2 gives me a minus 4. But actually, if you look now at our x's, 4x on top is positive, and the 4x underneath is negative. So they actually already cancelled for us. So job done. No need to change signs here, because it's already done for us. Then a plus y minus a 4y. That's going to be minus 3y, because it's like plus 1y minus 4y's. And then 7 minus 4 is 3. And now we just have to get rid of this minus 3 with y. So what did we do? Well, we just divide both sides by the coefficient of that term. And this goes, and we're left with y is equal to 3 over minus 3. Put that in your calculator, and it gives you minus 1. So it turns out y is actually minus 1. Now, with this done, we can put this value for y, which is minus 1, back into any original equation. So let's take a here, for instance. So a is now going to be 4x and a plus, now it's a minus 1 instead for y, and that's equal to 7. So 4x, a plus by a minus, like it's plus minus 1, so it's like minus 1. So now 4x is equal to 7, and this now comes over, becomes a plus 1. 4x is equal to 8, divide both sides by 4, gone. x is equal to 8 over 4, x is equal to 2. That's it. So that's just another way that you don't always look for the, um, your answers to or your solutions to fit the exact one that you know, because maths should be less about learning off solutions, but more about understanding them. So yeah, we came along here. It wasn't what we were used to from the introduction videos, but it turns out that when we looked at it closely, oh yeah, I don't have to change the signs. It's actually already done for me.